It is not fair that a Palestinian child cannot grow up in a state of their own. It's not right to prevent Palestinians from farming their lands or restricting a student's ability to move around the West Bank or displace Palestinian families from their homes. Neither occupation nor expulsion is the answer. Just as Israelis built a state in their homeland, Palestinians have a right to be a free people in their own land. Now, only you can determine what kind of democracy you will have. But remember that as you make these decisions, you will define not simply the future of your relationship with the Palestinians, you will, you will define the future of Israel as well. As Ariel Sharon said, I'm quoting him, it is impossible to have a Jewish democratic state at the same time to control all of Eretz Israel. If we insist on fulfilling the dream in its entirety, we are liable to lose it all. The United States stands with Israel. We will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in the space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. I got up this morning and started this at 7.30, 8 o'clock, my calls. Hamas terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians. In the street, in their homes, innocent people murdered, wounded, entire families taken hostage by Hamas. Just days after Israel marked the holiest of days in the Jewish calendar. It's unconscionable. You know, when I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu this morning, I told him the United States stands with the people of Israel in the face of these terrorist assaults. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people, full stop. There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. Let me say this as clearly as I can. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The world is watching. I've also been in contact with the King of Jordan, spoken with members of Congress, directed my national security team to engage with their Israeli counterparts, military to military, intelligence to intelligence, dipl diplomat to diplomat, to make sure Israel has what it needs. I've also directed my team to remain in constant contact with leaders throughout the region, including Egypt, Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Oman, the UAE, as well as our European partners and the Palestinian Authority. It's also a terrible tragedy on a human level. It's hurting innocent people, seeing the lives that have been broken by this, the families torn apart. It's heartbreaking. And Jill and I are praying for those families who've been impacted by this violence. We grieve with those who've lost their loved ones, lost a piece of their soul. We have hope for a swift recovery for many who have been wounded. But we're going to remain in close touch with Prime Minister. I personally am going to remain in close contact with Prime Minister Netanyahu as this situation continues to develop. And let there be no mistake, the United States stands with the state of Israel, just as we have from the moment the United States became the first nation to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its founding 75 years ago. Thank you very much. Mr. President, was there uh, an intelligence failure in the lead up to this attack? Mr. President, can you tell us what PV asked you specifically for support?